Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to talk about the portal circulation. And um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the liver lobules and the sinusoids. And the sinusoids are a very important part of the picture of portal circulation. So before going on to talk about portal hypertension and the diseases there, you really sort of need to understand what the sinusoid is and how it works. Um, so in this video, I'm really just going to briefly introduce uh, portal circulation. Then in the next video, I'll talk about the sinusoids and uh, a little bit more about hepatophysiology. And then um, I'll go on to create a video about um, portal hypertension. Um, okay, so the portal vein. The portal vein is the vein that drains the entire GI tract from the, pro from the distal part of the esophagus through the stomach, the small bowel, um, the colon, all the way down to the rectum. So it drains the almost the entire GI tract from the distal esophagus to the rectum. And now if you remember in just sort of basic review of circulation, um, usually you have arteries that break down into arterioles and then um, go down into a capillary bed and then after going through a small capillary bed spread back up into venules and these venules um, make their way to one of the major veins like the IVC or the SVC and go back to the heart. Okay, so we have artery, capillary bed, and then vein. So that's the usual state of affairs. However, when we have a portal vein system, what we have is, and I, I remember introducing this when I talked about the anterior pituitary gland because it's the other place in the body where we have a portal vein system. So with the portal vein system what we have is our arteries, arterioles, and capillaries, and then veins, And then these veins, instead of going to the IVC or the SVC, one of the major veins, they drain into a portal vein. And then we have the portal vein breaks up again into venules. And there's a whole second capillary bed here. And then that secondary second capillary bed opens up into veins again and then the second capillary bed drains in to the inferior vena cava okay so we have here a portal vein and then we have capillary bed 1 and capillary bed too. So a portal vein is, is essentially just a vein that uh, lies between two interconnected capillary beds. Now obviously you know a typical capillary bed has starts out with relatively high pressures right because we've got arterial pressures so the pressures in the beginning here are arterial pressures but portal veins are very low pressure. In fact, the portal vein of the liver has a pressure, an average normal pressure of about 10 millimeters of mercury. And by the time we get back to the inferior vena cava, we're down to about 2 millimeters of mercury. So anyways, this is a very low pressure, but still high flow system going through this capillary bed. And 
it's very prone to uh, if something happens in this capillary bed stenosis down and gets narrow and uh, there is increased resistance there is not a lot of extra pressure here to deal with that extra resistance so if we have significant problems in this capillary bed that's increasing resistance we're going to end up with with what's called portal hypertension and portal hypertension is going to it, it doesn't take much of a rise of pressure to cause significant problems because um, a slight increase in resistance is going to cause a significant decrease in flow and since this is the only normal mechanism for draining the entire GI tract um, decreases in flow are have serious repercussions okay so that's just a quick introduction to portal hypertension we'll talk about it a little bit more so anyways keep that this two capillary bed system in mind so remember the and I'm not going to go through the entire um, arterial supply of of the gut um, but the gut has its own arterial supply it breaks down into these um, very rich numerous capillary beds where all of our nutrients are absorbed within the GI tract and then it narrows down into um, and then it opens up into veins again and in these veins say we're draining um, from the small bowel and you know we're obviously draining up here um, we join the superior mesenteric vein and the superior mesenteric vein flows into joins up with the uh, splenic vein and inferior mesenteric vein and creates the portal vein and then it flows into the liver and then from the liver after it flows through lots and lots of capillaries and these capillaries in the liver capillaries in the liver because they're so specialized and unique they get their own name so the capillaries in the liver are called sinusoids and we'll talk about those in the next video then um, all these sort of join together and form um, a bunch of hepatic veins and these hepatic veins join into the inferior vena cava that happens to be flowing um, conveniently right by the center of the liver so this here is capillary bed number two the sinusoids and capillary bed number one is here in the gut stomach gut and the entire GI tract and then we have the portal vein in the middle okay so that's all I wanted to talk about with the um, with the portal circulation just a brief introduction and um, please join me in my next video where I talk about the sinusoids and um, and sort of the uh, hepatic physiology that starts off in the sinusoids and then um, sort of works its way into the hepatocytes and uh, various other cells in the liver okay as always, if you found this video helpful, please take a second to uh, click on the thumbs up to give me feedback. And I'm always willing to entertain questions. You can put them in the comments below. And I look at the comments quite frequently, and I will um, answer them if I'm able to. And also, I'm going to put a little link um, to for you to um, subscribe to my channel if you want to uh, if you want quick and easy access to my videos. Thank you very much.